Today's the day. Welcome back to Two Guys Take on Real Estate. And today is the day that I get to check out Smurf House. All right, so if those of you who have been following us for a little bit, watch a lot of our live stream, you might have been following this property where we live streamed us buying this house at a foreclosure auction right here, right in front of the property. And you know why I call it Smurf House, don't you? Well, kind of pretty self-explanatory. So when you buy the house at an auction, you're the winning bidder and you win the auction, you don't necessarily become the owner right there on the spot. You still have to go through a closing process. So even though we won the house, we weren't the owner that day. Now, in the meantime, between winning the auction and today becoming the owner, we knew and found out <clears throat> There were squatters inside. Not a fan of that. Huge, huge red flag for us. And uh, we knew we would have to start dealing with that. So I tried to deal with it a little bit uh, before we became the owner. But unfortunately, there's only so much you can actually do when you don't even own a house to get rid of a squatter. It's hard enough when you are the owner. You don't have a lot of rights in states like Massachusetts, let me tell you. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about this house. We're going to go and check out what's going on at this property now that we've become the owner. So this house right here, we won it for closure auction by bidding right on the front lawn with a bunch of other people, and we won the bid for $81,000 for this pretty good sized place. This is what, two family, three story property in the third largest city in the state of Massachusetts. Now, right when we finished the auction, we were the winning bidder, we became aware that there were people inside the property. And that's not something I wanted to have to deal with at all. Uh, really, really, really don't want to deal with squatters. But unfortunately, when you go to auctions and you're learning how to do this stuff, um, you're going to realize this, this comes with the territory sometimes. And that's why I always tell people it's super important to learn before you leap. And that's one of the main reasons we wrote our book, Foreclosures Unlocked. It teaches you a lot about this stuff. So Knowing that it's occupied by potentially some squatters, uh, I knew I'd have to deal with it someday when we became the owner. Well, today's the day. We finally closed on the property after the auction completed, and I'm going to go check it out with you. Now, uh, in fairness, I did a little bit of a live stream, and I did walk around the property looking to see if how I could get into the house, thinking that since I don't have keys and it would be all locked up, it's going to be a little tough. Um, but I found... Well, I'll show you what I found. The house, obviously it's in rough shape. Most foreclosures are gonna be a little distressed in one way or another, some more than others. And the people that were squatting here had a third vehicle, a different vehicle that was generally parked here. I haven't seen this vehicle after having staked out this house for a while. I haven't seen it for weeks. So I feel pretty good that they've moved on. Um, and I'm thinking today, how the hell am I gonna get into this property? So again, in fairness, I did stream a little bit of this ahead of time be trying to get in and I found that um, these doors here are really really well locked the basement really well boarded but I found that there was a window and I found one on the side however I decided to use the old noodle and try the front door sometimes the easiest solution is <laughs> This is the right way to go from the beginning. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's see what's going on inside the house. <clears throat> I did get about as far as this living room. Hello, anybody here? Last thing you wanna do is surprise people. Now it's a big house. Like I said, I, I did find that the door was unlocked and I did get about as far as here but there's three levels and a basement so lots of shoe boxes lighting See what else we got. One of the best things about owning a Rivian pickup truck is you always have a charged up flashlight handy. All right, let's keep moving. So this would, I think, go to a shared hallway and back door, but um, it's dead bolted with a key that of course we don't have. 
and that goes to the back porch. So we're gonna go down to go up, is my guess. I kicked in portion of doors. That was probably the basement. What was left of the basement door here. That's how people were getting in. All right, so what did we buy? We got nice old oil tanks, older hot water tank. So we had, yeah, that's crazy. With the power that was on, they jumped the electrical and uh, somehow over here, they just spliced it in with some duct tape to get the, uh, to get the heating system to run. So one unit had power or was able to get power on. They used it, ah, spider webs everywhere, and they used it to get that to run. This is gorgeous. Look at this. If anybody knows what uh, what this is, let me know in the comments. I'll give you a second. What do they call this? Well, they call it a snowman. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a big old heating system, and I'll give you a guess about what this white stuff is and why they call it a snowman. Um, what this white stuff is. Pro tip, hint, uh, you don't want to guess what it is by smelling it. <laughs> Please do not go over and breathe that in. Um, all right, so let's look around the rest of this basement down here. If you need rims, I'm your man. I'll hook you up, make you a deal. Sure, I gotta paint the house up, keep it nice. Oh man, so Matt doesn't have to worry about hitting his head on spider webs and things hanging down because uh, Matt couldn't touch this if he jumped. Just kidding, Matt. You're the best. We're here to go see what we got in the rest of this house. Let's get up to the second and third levels and see how we're doing over there. I mean, you know, this was, this was a solid apartment for somebody. I mean, I mean, this was probably like a solid apartment. Somebody could have been living here for 50 years, living in a nice home like this. It's intact. <coughs> I mean, it's got, you know, you can see some some water leaks, radiators, or a roof leak there. It's out of date. Obviously, it's super out of date, right? But these were nice houses when they were built. You know, they were built to be multifamily homes, um, sometimes for really large families, you know, or their extended families. See what we got here. Oh yeah, we got a nice little bedroom set up. So I don't know how to get into the other bedroom on this floor here. The tile work. Alright, so let's keep going. So third level or attic. Now a lot of times. These third floors could be legitimate homes with a front and back entrance, full kitchen, bath, everything separate. But the city never zoned it to be a three family. So uh, even though they get, end up getting used as a three family, it's technically an illegal apartment when they do. What a dumb thing that is. But uh, we've even seen the city tax the property as a three family tax, even though they never signed off on it and zoned it to be a three family. So when you go to use it as a three family and they catch you, you're in trouble. Meanwhile, they're taxing you as a three family and if you don't pay it, you know, you're in trouble. Uh, so if it's a two family, what you'll end up doing is you'll repurpose all these rooms up here and make them part of the second floor apartment. So the second floor apartment will essentially just be one big, you know, six bedroom home. Uh, two floors, maybe two baths. You know, five, five, six bedrooms. Uh, be a ton of, ton of room. Um, we're looking good. Oh, nice. That's a cool Coors poster right there. Somebody's got to take that home. Oh, it's going out. In the, eh, it's going home with me tonight. It's freaking scared me <laughs> to have to come around the corner and see the little lights on. But the power was jumped out and spliced around. It could be that the power's been on here for just quite some time, and whoever was using this place isn't paying for it. This person, who knows, um, I don't think they would have left the clothes that they were just leaving hanging up. I don't think they would have left it. I feel like they got arrested or didn't come home at one point and 
somebody came through, took anything of value, really. We had probably, a, well, it's a really dirty old sound bar. There was, maybe there was a TV sitting here, but I don't see any dust, like imprint of it. So it's hard to say. So it looks like they didn't, nobody built a kitchen up here. So this is basically just part of the second floor, as it technically probably should be if you're calling this a two-family house. All in all, uh, not horrible. Looks like the place is vacant. I was able to get in all three le levels of the home and the basement. Um, there's a lot, a lot of trash, a lot of stuff that needs to be thrown away. Um, but we already have a buyer in place for this, and to me, it looks like this place is not going to be an issue. It looks like it's vacant. So I'm not going to be dealing with having to worry about selling the property and having people in it and having the buyer back out at the last second. So that means... The risk we took looks so far like it paid off. We're in this thing for 81 and change, and uh, we're selling it for 190. Uh, not a bad way to go when you have the ability to have it all done and uh, resold within a week or so of actually becoming the owner of it. That's awesome. Uh, these things don't happen by accident. You have to learn about this stuff. And again, that's why we teach it in our book, Foreclosures Unlocked, and I'm begging you. Do yourself a favor and support our channel at the same time by buying a copy of Foreclosures Unlocked. It's on Amazon. And honestly, my big concern now is making sure nobody comes back in. So we're here. I believe the place to be to be vacant and having been, been, been vacant for a bit. The big thing is to make sure now that nobody comes back. So we need to get some locks changed. We need to get some entrances secured. There's a lot of windows. There's a lot of doors. Uh, we need to lock this stuff down so we don't have people coming back and all of a sudden it becoming a problem. Uh, that's definitely my number one concern is right now, I think we're in great shape to sell the place. However, that might not be the case tomorrow. So we're going to start working on it. I'm going to talk to Matt, the other guy from Two Guys Take on Real Estate. And uh, we're going to work together to come up with a plan to lock this place up tight. And that way we can turn around, sell it to the new buyer, and uh, they'll be confident knowing that they're buying a vacant property. I don't know if they're buying it uh, in the condition that it's in, in terms of needing to be trashed out or not, but the next step would otherwise be to get our trash out crew in here, get this place emptied. It's gonna look 10 times nicer when all this absolute junk and trash and, and stuff is all cleaned out and the place is broom swept. Um, and honestly, if you don't have a buyer lined up at that point, that's a great thing to do. Spend the extra couple bucks, trash this place out, get it nice and clean, swept out, etc. Now you can bring in potential buyers. They can see everything for what it is. They know the place is empty. They know what it looks like. They know what issues it has and what issues it doesn't have. And it's going to present so much better. You're going to see that reflected in the price that you can command for the house that you're selling. Uh, thanks for sticking with me through all this. It made it a little bit less scary for me, knowing that I had you guys get my back. Um, I know you guys had, you know, your phones out you're poised ready to call 911 in case i fell into trouble even if you're watching this six months after i after it happened um thanks for sticking around thanks for being here if you didn't take a second to like subscribe push buttons you know do that right now we'd really appreciate that i survived i got in i got out nothing happened to me <laughs>